And so I'm going to go under with chunky yarn over. It's real, the pencils make it so easy to go over and under and it holds that tension. And it might get a little loose and if it gets loose, you just kind of pull the tabs that you make. All right, so we just did our first over under. Oh no! Well, I just lost my pencil, but that's okay. So I'm gonna go over under again, no big deal. Glad this stuff happens. Okay, so with your first over under, and I'm gonna push it down with the pencil so it's nice and tight. And be very careful when I lift it up to not ruin my place. And so you're gonna do this for a little while. And you're just gonna go over and under, over and under, over and under, till it gets the certain length that you want. Now, what I'm gonna show you now is how to kind of turn it back and continue the over under pattern. Um, Cause at this point you wanna be careful of how tight you pull it or how loose you give it um, to make the sides go in or go out or stay straight. And again, it doesn't have to be straight. It can go any way you want, um, but just something that you can have thought of control over so you can figure out what you wanna do and what you want it to look like. All right, so after I squish it down the pencil, I slide the top pencil back up, and then I know this is my oopsies, so it slides. So you could tape it or you could tie it, um, and I'm gonna, oh no, okay. I'm a little messy ball unraveled. So I'm gonna ravel it back up. Okay, and now since I ended under, I'm gonna go back over. You just always want to follow that over, under, over, under, over, under pattern. Just to start. Eventually, when you get really good at this, you can go over, under, you can skip one, you can squish them together, you can put other things in there, go on with your bad self. But for now, let's just do the over, under. I really like learning the basis of something, the basics of something, pardon me, um, before getting a little crazy. And that way I can really understand the craft and understand the material and how it's made and what it does before, um, before trying other things. But you know, that's only my process and everyone has their process, so you do you. So again, I ended on the under, so I'm gonna go over, under, over, under. It's kind of like a dolphin or something going through the, going on the ocean, just like. Okay, so. Do, 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 do. So I'm going to do this for a little while until I might cut to another color. Now you can use the same string for the whole thing or you can use different material throughout. You can tie things in there as you go. If you want to put an object in there like a shell or an acorn. Well, anyway, you figure it out. You let me know. So it's easy to get these strings kind of caught up. So it's a combination of being really gentle, but also being assertive with the string and letting it know where to go. But I mean, the string has a tendency, depending on the material, to stick together. Okay, cool. So after I I think I'm done with the candy stripe one. I'm going to push it down with the pencil, really push it down, and then gently pick it up and show it to you. And so this is what my leaving looks like right now. And so you can be as loose or as tight with this as you want, but I'm going to be a little loosey-goosey because that's what I'm feeling. And so I'm going to continue kind of building other string there. And when you want to attach other string, you just can tie it to the end and you can cut the other thing on um, but you want to make sure that it is tied on securely so it doesn't cut loose but if it cuts loose you can fix it um, and so you at this point want to go as high as the loom or as high as you want it depending on what you're making if you're making floppies do whatever if you're doing a coaster maybe you want it more square if you're doing you know, a little tablecloth or a doll set do that too I don't know do your thing but for now we're going to Cut it, Boop. and I am going to use the twine. Actually, no, I'm using pipe cleaner. Mm -hmm. And so for the pipe cleaner, I'm not going to attach it to the string. 
I'm just going to continue the over under pattern. And that cuts through. And then you have to be a little, this wire, just a little careful not to stab yourself, but still only sharp on the end. And the over under can get a little tricky. But as you're working with different material like pipe cleaners or twine or ribbon or t shirt material or plastic bags, you'll learn how the different material works and doesn't work. And so I'm going to use another pipe cleaner and just kind of go through. And I'm not worried about tying it on because it's pretty, uh, pretty sturdy. But I'm worried I am going under, over, over, under, under, over. Over, under, over, under, just like a dolphin. Except, you know, weaving. Okay, cool. So, okay, my pencil popped out. So I'm gonna put my pencil in and I'm going to do, 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 push it down. As you can see, well, a little funky door looking, but just never weaving. So again, there's lots of ways to do this and you can figure out the best way that works for you. But just keep following the same pattern over, under, over, under, over, under. And then just try to remember the last thing that you did. So if you know you ended on an over, you know the next is under. But also, you can visually see it, which is helpful. Sometimes when you do other types of weaving or crocheting or knitting, um, I sometimes get my, get my brain in a twist and I kind of forget. And because of, depending on the type of material I'm using, I can't really tell what the last stitch I was that I did. And I can't really tell till the end what I did. But that's okay. Okay. So now, over, under, over, under, we got it. So we got the craft string at the bottom, we got some pipe cleaners, and now I'm going to use this big old ribbon. And I ended, and I'm gonna fold the pipe cleaner over at the edges, or under at the edges, depending. Oops. And then, I'm gonna use my fancy pants ribbon do the same pattern of over, under, over, under, over, under. And I only have a little bit of this left, but it's really pretty. And this is a fun project to utilize some of that old yarn, old ribbon, old string you have that maybe you bought for something or maybe was Part of something special um, just is repurposing it in a different way so collecting your memories much like when you made the t-shirt tote bags using old t-shirts that meant something to you maybe this is a chance you'll use old ribbon or old fiber or old things that you used on another project in a different way cool so i think actually i'm done i'm going to cut this off at the edge and so this is our project today so again i just used a little string little pipe cleaners a little big ribbon and some twine and some cardboard pencils. That's it. And so to tie it off, there are different ways to do it. But the easiest way is to flip it on its side or on its back and take your scissors and kind of cut, cut, cut the back twine and then gently, and this is where we got the very gentle, use one hand to hold it down and then the other hand to pull The twine out of the grooves. Now, if you're working with tiny humans, this is something that I advise you to do with them. Or what you can do is you can tie them while they're still in the cardboard. So you tie it and double knot it. Pop. Tie it. Double knot it. So this is something that if you're working with a young person and they're just getting used to tying shoes, it's a good job for them. Or if you are teaching that to them right now, your homeschool adventures. Ah, see, I wasn't counting my strings. So I have one extra. So I'm actually just gonna tie it to the other one and that's just fine. Alrighty, so you can either pull it off or tie it here. And then you wanna flip it over and again, use your hand and at this point, you can pull out the pencils. And on the side that's tied, I'm going to have that be one side. 
And then I'm going to firmly but gently hold the strings so they're a little more taut and tie them. And that'll be the end of our weaving project. So tie, tie all these ends together. And at this point, again, you can squeeze really hard, but that'll scrunch it, or you can be really loose about it. But either way, it's a good lesson in sort of how this stuff works. Thanks for joining me. And this was a project that I did as a kiddo in my elementary school class, and I loved it so much that I kept on weaving all the time. I even got myself a small lap loop as a child. I used to weave stuff all the time. It was really a lot of fun you can have with it, especially if you're you know, searching for non-screen time stuff to do. This can be really beautiful and really fun on those rainy days. Okay, cool. So we are done here. And so what I'm going to do now is doo -doo -doo, cut the edge thread Oopsies. And we have this little pattern coming off. And I'm going to gently pull the knots that I made while still connected to the cardboard out from the grooves. So now we have our loom that we can use again. And so if this is something that you want to keep working at, you can use the same loom for a really long time. So Right now, this is what we have. It looks kind of crazy. Um, but what I'm going to do is gently put it down and hold the weaving together and pull the strings so that they work out really well. On one side, I'm going to cut the edges with this sort of fringy, fringy string really short so that you can't see them too well. And then the other side, and I might do the same. But at this point, too, you could put in a stick. You could put it back in the pencil, and you could use it to hang. So, boop -doo, there you go. So this is a really loose one just to give you an idea, but you can have lots of fun with them. Well, great. Well, thanks so much for making a place with me today. Again, I'm Laura from Education at OpenWorks, and take care. Make sure you make it a place, make us your night, wash your hands, social distance, maybe wear some masks, and we'll see you next time. Bye.